I track every penny that I spend. I don't buy coffee. I cut my own hair. I go to the supermarket that has the lowest price for berries. And I spend hours searching for a 20p deal for a 10 pound purchase. You'll notice that the computer behind me is turned off because I have been trying to save pennies on my energy bills. Wow, I got through that with a straight face. Only two out of those are true. And I'll tell you which two at the end of this episode and why. But before that, here are four personal finance hacks that I use to approach my finances in the most minimalistic way, which means that I don't end up spending a ton of my time looking at spreadsheets or comparison shopping. I spend time where it matters. And that to me is true financial minimalism. The first hack that I use is to automate paying bills. The moment salary hits my account, my bills get paid the first thing. So if my salary is in my account, account on the 30th by the first or the second of the next month all my bills will be paid so I have set up my billing system in a way so that it coincides with when my salary hits my account for example my credit card bill will be debited on the first of the month all my other memberships like the gym or the nursery bills and whatever else basically is debited from my account on the first or the second of the month every month without fail and this is a fantastic way of keeping yourself out of especially credit card debt but actually any debt and this is one of the easiest ways to improve your credit score if you are interested in learning more about how to improve your credit score leave me a comment below and i'll get to it the second hack is to automate your savings and investments and this is connected to the first one in the sense that you are automating your bill payments or you are automating certain payments but this is almost taking it a step further so there are two parts to it the first part is that you pay yourself first so even before you are getting paid your salary you are setting aside a certain percentage of your salary into your pension or your Roth IRA 401k whatever it is that your savings instrument is and in my case today I save about 20% of my salary even before it hits my account obviously this was not always 20% when I was younger it was more like 3% 5% whatever percentage you can put Put away for your retirement you are putting away upfront and then you pay your bills simultaneously you also have other savings targets I'm assuming say for example one of mine could be buying a new camera for the YouTube channel or going on a vacation or something with a longer investment horizon like setting aside a pot of money for my child's education fund so on the first or the second of every month all of those savings accounts will also be credited from my current account automatically without me lifting a finger that is how I have set up my personal finance system to be a couple of you have asked me before how I invest and I have to tell you that I'm not a financial advisor so very likely your financial objectives are different to mine I can tell you about how I invest but that's not necessarily how you should invest so if you are looking for financial advice please speak to a financial advisor however if you ask me how I invest I I personally invest in index funds and retirement funds which typically follow an index or have a risk profiling based on the retirement date that you choose. I personally use Vanguard as my platform for investing. This video is not sponsored by Vanguard. You can look at other competitors like Fidelity and I'm sure there are others in your country. Look at what other investment options are there within your country. Speak to a financial advisor if you need to. And yeah that's how I automate my savings and investments. The third hack that I use is to negotiate on the big ticket items of my life. For example, if I'm buying a house or if I'm looking for rent, I would negotiate on the price of the house or the rent that I'm paying. If I'm looking for a new job, I'd negotiate on the salary. If I'm looking to buy a car, I would negotiate on the price of that car. You get the gist of it. This is not about negotiating on your $10 purchases. This is about negotiating on the 200, 300, 400 thousand dollar purchases because like I've discussed in my last video which I'll link up here when you buy something like a house and you take up a huge mortgage you want to make sure that your numbers tie up and you are not actually paying more money than you think you are paying. So negotiating on the big purchases like your housing decision is 
far more effective and frankly less time consuming than obsessing on the 20 peas that you save on your flat whites or your blueberries whether you should go to MS versus Aldi. The fourth one is really using the abundant psyche. How would you feel if you had that right now in your life? So for example, if you had that new handbag that you have been wanting to get, how would that make you feel? If you bought that new pair of sneakers when you have 10 others in your cupboard already, how would that significantly improve the quality of your life? When you want to go on that holiday, what gets you most excited about it? Is it the people that you get to spend time with? Is it the downtime? Is it that particular location? is it something else and when you feel like your happiness or the quality of your life is significantly improved by buying that new thing put a plan into action of how you can go get it sometimes it could just be okay i just need to swipe my credit card whereas in other cases it could mean that you need to save up three thousand four thousand five thousand dollars to go on that vacation or buy that handbag so to give you a small example of how this worked in my life once upon a time, I used to be obsessed about becoming partner in my Big Four consulting firm. And one day, I imagined myself as a Big Four partner in my firm doing AI solutions. And I considered whether the state of my happiness was increased or decreased. And when I tuned into that feeling, I realized that my happiness was exactly the same as it was as of today. And that is when I realized that I don't need to become a big four partner to be happy. Which is why I encourage you to think like this because sometimes we consider that the new handbag will give us happiness or a new pair of sneakers will give us happiness. Whereas most of the times, it's just that journey to getting that that brings us the happiness. And if it's the journey, the experience, then what are the other journeys, other experiences that you can have in your life that money can actually buy or what money can't buy? For example, spending quality time with your family playing in the sand while the sun is shining, which is what I want to do right now. And for those of you who are wondering what are the two habits that I do use out of the five that I mentioned while starting this video well actually sometimes I do cut my own hair not because I want to save money by cutting my hair but because I have in 10 years not been able to find a good hairstylist for me in London so if you are in London and if you are watching this please suggest me a good hairstylist and the second one is that I tend to not buy coffee it's not to save money but it's to save the environment sometimes I actually travel with my travel mug and I buy coffee in that but most times I even say no to free coffees because it has an environmental impact so yeah some things are really beyond money and if you enjoyed this video please leave a like in the comment it really motivates me so much to keep creating these videos especially when the sun is shining and I can go play in the sand and if you enjoyed this video you might enjoy this one or this one and I'll see you the next time bye